You know what's weird? I have three more of these Pocky One Chip Challenges and three more of these little Nitro Gummy Bears that I don't know what to do with. I'm trying to decide if I want to do a video with them. I already did a Pocky video. I didn't do a little Nitro video. I don't know what to do with these. Should I make a video on them? Should I take these? Should I get some friends? Should we, should we do these in a video? Let me know. Hey guys, what's up? It's Bravity and welcome back to another video here on my channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. So today's video is going to be short and sweet because tomorrow I'm actually leaving to go out of town. I'm going to be filming some stuff on my vacation. I have a lot of traveling coming up actually, so I'm going to be filming a lot of stuff as I travel. But I just wanted to knock this video out real quick before I have to leave for a vacation. And today we're going to be covering render settings inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. I asked some people who are new to YouTube what they wanted to know about editing inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and kind of the YouTube workflow. And a lot of them mentioned how to export in proper settings from Adobe Premiere Pro and it is really easy to do but I figured I'd cover it just in case you kind of had some doubts and felt like you were doing it wrong so here we are inside of Adobe Premiere Pro this is the video that I released last week on track matte stingers inside of OBS 27 and as you can see I've got the completed video right here so what I'm gonna do when I'm done is you just need to set your in and out point so you can see this big highlighted section that's what's going to export inside of the timelines and you set that by hitting I and O on your keyboard you see I can move them around by hitting I and O I for in O for out so we're gonna go to the very beginning of your timeline hit I make sure that playhead is at the very beginning so you get the entirety of the video go to the end and I always export with just a little bit of black on the end you can see it goes to black but my music still fading out so I'll let the music fade out and I'll put my out point right after the music ends. so there we go we've got from the beginning to the end inside of our in and out points and that is what is going to export but something I want to point out real quick that I've got tripped up with multiple times and it's very annoying you see this blue outline that's going around your timeline here and you see when I click between different windows how it kind of moves that blue outline so if you're on the timeline it'll export your timeline but if you're like in your project window and you're selected here and you have like a piece of footage selected and your timeline is not selected if you go up to export it's going to export the piece of footage that you have selected right here not your video I've had that happen so many times and you finish this like 10 minute export and you look at it and you're like mm. Oh my god and you realize you have to export it all again so please make sure that you have that blue border around your timeline make sure you're selecting the timeline export the timeline not just a random piece of footage but once you have this selected your in and out points are put in place you're gonna go up to file and you're going to hit export and then media and it's gonna bring up the export window so you're gonna see up here we got the format drop down inside this format drop down you're gonna want to make sure you're on h.264 this is the typical file type that you're gonna want when you're uploading to YouTube so make sure you switch that over to h.264 if it's on something else and then when you do that you're gonna get a bunch of presets here and you're gonna see there is so many presets to choose from but if you just want to be quick about it you're gonna notice if you scroll down to the bottom there are YouTube presets created for you and these are actually really good so if you click on YouTube 1080p if you're exporting in 1080p or if you want to export in 4k you can do the 2160p but in 1080p YouTube 1080p preset right there that one is really really good you could hit export right now or Q to send it into media encoder if you want to export through media encoder but you could hit export right now and you could be done that would be the end of it you'd be able to export that you'd be able to upload it and it would look great but I like to go through and I like to change a couple things so as you can see if we drop down in this preset drop down and we go up to the top you're gonna see we've got the Bravity Upload 4K and we've got the Bravity Upload HD. These are my custom presets that are already set. So whether I'm exporting in HD or in 4K, I've got those ready to go right at the top. And I'm gonna show you how to create these as well here in a second. So what I like to do is I like to start from the YouTube presets down here. So if I'm creating a 1080p preset, I'm gonna click on YouTube 1080p. And the one thing I'm gonna change is I'm gonna come down here in the video tab. So if you click on the video tab and scroll down, you're gonna see that you can custom set your target and maximum bitrate so this is where I'm gonna change it up a little bit so it's set to 16 for the target and maximum bitrate I like to go a little bit higher so if you look down here at the estimated file size we're estimated to have about a 718 at megabyte file so if I jump up here and change it to about 25 is usually what I like to have it at that's gonna up our bitrate pretty heavily make the quality of our video a little bit higher and you're gonna see that now the file size has jumped up pretty heavily I'm okay with this I like having a high quality video file it's not that much more space to have a nicer looking video file and when I say nicer looking just know this is so marginal you can barely tell and after YouTube gets its hands on it and really compresses it down it's pretty much no different than just exporting with the typical YouTube 1080p preset but I like to do it for myself another thing that I do is I jump down here you're gonna see this little checkbox that says use maximum render quality this uh 
it does very little. It just kind of makes me feel better when I tell it to use the maximum render quality. You know, it doesn't do much. You can see what it says right there. It gives better quality scaling, but increases the encoding time. Once again, I'm fine with increasing the encoding time if it's going to give me maybe just a tiny little bump in quality. So above this target and maximum bit rate, you are going to see another drop down that says VBR one pass. That's variable bit rate one pass. And if you're coming from the streaming world, you might see variable bit rate and kind of panic and go, what? No, 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 no. I'm going to switch that over to CBR. But when you're exporting a video, you're actually going to want to use VBR. You're going to want it to vary the bitrate to keep your file size down. It knows when it needs to ramp up the bitrate. It knows when to bring the bitrate down a lot better than when you're streaming. Streaming, yeah, constant bitrate makes sense, but when you're rendering a video, VBR one pass makes sense. If you want it to optimize the bitrate a little bit more, you can go VBR two pass. Once again, it's going to increase your encoding time quite a bit because it's got to render through it twice. I always export VBR one pass unless I want a very, very high quality and nice export. So if I'm doing like a short film, I'm probably going to go to two pass pass, but for a YouTube video, I'm just going to stick to VBR one pass for 1080p. I'm around 25 on the bit rate. I've got this maximum render quality thing checked, and now it's time to save this as a preset. So if you come up here to where it says custom, you'll notice it says custom instead of the YouTube preset because we changed some stuff right here. This little arrow that's pointing down at the bar. It says save preset. You can click on that and name this whatever you want. So test 1080p, that's 1090p, 1080p export preset. Boom. If we name it just like that, hit OK. You're going to see it names it here. And if we hit the preset drop down, you're going to see we've got it in our list now. So if we cancel out of this, we go back into here. We go up to file export media. You're going to see that it is inside our drop down right here, ready to click on. And now you can just jo jump down there, hit export and you're done. So now let's create a 4K exporting preset. So if we hit the drop down here, let's start with the YouTube 2160p preset right here. We're gonna go ahead and jump down here and click that maximum render quality just to get that little bit of peace of mind that we're getting the maximum render quality. But let's go ahead and scroll down and now you're gonna see for the bit rate for 4K, it's recommending the 40 bit rate, but we can go ahead and take that up a little bit. Let's maybe go 50 for the bit rate on this. So our target and maximum bit rate is now 50. Once again, you can set it to VBR two pass if you want it to be very high quality and optimize the bit rate. But once again, I'm just going to leave it at one pass. But there we go. We've got the bit rate upped a little bit. So it upped our file size, but upped our quality a little bit. We've got the maximum render check. So now we can hit this save preset button up here now and we can call this test 4K export preset. Boom. Hit OK. And now from our drop down here, you see right next to our 1080p, we've got the test 1080p export preset. We've got the test 4K export preset. So now whatever you're exporting out of Premiere Pro for YouTube, whether it's 1080p, whether it's 4K, you can now click that and you're ready to go. There's one more thing that I do want to cover inside of this video, and it's this very end tab down here. For all these other tabs, you really don't have to touch it. Audio, there's really not much to change in here. Effects, obviously, there's nothing you want to change in here. There's really nothing to change, but in the publish tab, you're going to see that you can actually Actually set it up to publish directly to YouTube if you wanted to. So I do not do this, but the only reason I think it would be cool is just if you had to leave your computer for a while and you wanted to just do the upload for you. But one thing I'm going to recommend is that if you turn this on, you're going to see that you can set the privacy on it. I would recommend setting this to private. I would not publish from here. And the reason is you still have to do quite a bit. Yes, you can set your tags. You can set your custom thumbnail. You can set all kinds of stuff in here. You can even set it to delete the file on your computer after you upload to YouTube. So if you really wanted to crank your bit rate up and have this massive file, you can have it export it upload it to YouTube and delete the file off your computer so you don't have to store it anywhere. I honestly wouldn't recommend doing that because you never know when you're on a pull from an old video and you want to make sure you have that full quality video, not pulling it from YouTube. So I always keep my exports. I always keep all my footage so I don't delete it. But the reason I would recommend not publishing from here is you've still got to set up your end cards and your tags and things like that. You have to set up your monetization. If you're a partner, things like that, you can't do that from inside of here. So I'd highly recommend just setting it to private. Then once it exports, uploads for you, you can head on over to YouTube. You can finish doing all that setup stuff. You've got it already on YouTube ready to go. You just have to jump in there and set your cards. So this could be useful, but I personally do not use it. But that's pretty much everything you need to know for the Adobe Premiere Pro export tab here. There's really not much that goes into exporting when you're doing it to YouTube. There's a lot more complicated stuff if you're maybe exporting something for TV or broadcast, things like that. But for YouTube, there's not much you really have to think about. Even just those custom YouTube presets that are already built in are really great. You could honestly just hit YouTube 1080 
ASAP and hit export. I did that for a long time at the beginning of the channel just because I was too lazy to set custom presets. But I did finally set the custom presets up to the bitrate and it does make the videos look ever so slightly better if you really have a trained eye. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed these export settings. Maybe everything I described here is something you are already doing when you export your videos, but now you have peace of mind and know that you are actually doing it correctly. I know that was a big thing when I was starting out making videos. I felt like I was doing something right, but I just didn't know because nobody would show me if I was doing it right. So now hopefully you learned something or hopefully you've got the peace of mind and know that you are actually exporting correctly. You're getting the highest quality possible for your YouTube channel. And that is a... Uh that is what I'm here for. I'm here to make your videos better. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, got something out of it, and I will see you in the next one.